Well, hello and welcome to this month's CSF podcast. As always, we're going to bring you up to date with the latest information and data in the wonderful world of rheumatology. It's great to have you back. Thanks for joining us. If this is your first time, hope you enjoy it and please make sure you come back again. So today I'm going to review two papers that look at the epidemiology of autoimmune disease. And our first paper, the, the GBD 2021 Rheumatoid Arthritis Collaborators, systematically reviewed the global RA burden and used these data to predict prevalence through to 2050, which is a pretty bold claim. So I'm, I'm looking forward to telling you about what it was they came up with. And then the second paper uh, comes from Natalie Conrad and colleagues, and it reports the incidence and prevalence of 19 different autoimmune disorders in the United Kingdom also stratifying by age, sex, and socioeconomic status. And just as a quick um, upfront de declaration, I, 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 I was a part of that second study. So there we go. I don't think it influences my thoughts, having said all that. So and as ever, to access detailed summary slides of the papers discussed today, visit sitekindsignaling.com. Sitekindsignaling, all one word, signaling with a double L. And we can debate whether that's the right spelling or the wrong spelling, depending on which side of the Atlantic you reside. OK, first paper, Global, Regional and National Burden of Rheumatoid Arthritis, 1990 to 2020, Projections to 2050, a systematic analysis of the Global Burden of Disease Study 2021. OK, well, what's this all about? I think we would all recognise that accurate and up-to-date estimates of the burden of RER are needed for healthcare planning resource allocation and prevention. And the last GBD study in RA included cases up to 2019. Now, since then, improved therapies have become available, but access to these therapies varies quite considerably on a global basis. So this study examined data from GBD 2021 to provide an update analysis of RA burden, fatal and non-fatal estimates by age, sex, location, and year. It also reported on smoking as an RA risk factor and RA prevalence forecast through to 2050, which is certainly a long range view in terms of healthcare provision planning. And the data for RA incidence and prevalence and population representative data sources were pooled from 204 countries and territories using a Bayesian meta regression tool. So it's really a broad ranging study and I think therefore of, of huge interest and importance. RA prevalence was forecast to 2050 by logistic regression with socio-demographic index as a predictor, then multiplying by projected um, population estimates. So you work out what you think is likely to happen and then you go into the estimates in each different population. That tells you roughly what you think is about to happen in the decades to come. So what are the key findings? Well, in 2020, 17.6 million people globally were estimated to live with rheumatoid arthritis. The region with the highest number of RA cases was Southeast Asia, East Asia and Oceania at 5,360,000 cases. RA prevalence rates were highest in high income countries. Age standardized global prevalence increased by 14.1%. The greatest increase in RA prevalence was in North Africa and the Middle East at 50.1%. The age standardized death rate was 0 0.47 per 100,000 population, which was a 23.8% decrease from 1990 to 2020. Across all age groups, RA prevalence was significantly higher in females than males. Uh, the 2020 disability adjusted life year count was 3,060,000 with an age standardized DLY DALI rate of 36.4 per 100,000 population. Years lived with disability accounted for 76% of DALIs. Smoking was the only RA risk factor included in GBE 2021 and was attributed to 217,000 of all RA DALIs, that's 7% give or take. Now, finally, what about prediction? The, it's predicted that there will be 31.7 million individuals worldwide with RA by 2050. The greatest increase in RA cases is predicted to occur in Eastern Sub-Saharan Africa. So what do we make of all of this? Well, RA mortality has decreased globally over the last three decades, and that's obviously welcome information. Hopefully that reflects, at least in part, the improvement in our approach to care. 
Prevalence is expected to increase to the year 2050, leading to a greater burden in healthcare systems. That will be accompanied by an aging population and hopefully a growing population all being well. And in most regions, this increase is attributed though primarily to population growth. Um, Predicted increases in prevalence in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia are attributed to increasing economic development in the regions and improved access to early RA diagnosis and treatment globally is going to lead, we hope, if we're going to reduce the future burden of disease. So lots of really important information here. I, I do commend this paper to you. Huge amount of work and, and uh, chapeau to the authors. Okay, the second paper, Instance Prevalence and Co-Occurrence of Autoimmune Disorders Over Time and by Age, Sex and Socioeconomic Status. It's a population-based cohort study of 22 million individuals in the United Kingdom. Well, the background here, I guess not dissimilar to what I said about the first paper on today's podcast, estimates of autoimmune disease, incidence rates and their temporal trends even in high-income countries are scarce and inconsistent. You'll often hear it say, for example, that autoimmune disease is much less common nowadays. Uh, while there is evidence that autoimmune diseases tend to co-occur within individuals, no large-scale studies have provided information on shared pathogenesis and risk factors. And the aim of this study was therefore to investigate the instance and prevalence of 19 autoimmune diseases in the United Kingdom, assessing trends over time and by different categories. Uh, data were derived from electronic health records from the 1st of January 1985 to 30th of June 2019. Men and women with records considered acceptable for research purposes by the Clinical Practice Research Data Link, CPRD, approved for hospital episode statistics and Office for National Statistics linkage, and GP registered for more than or equal to 12 months during the study period were included. 22,009,375 individuals were included in the study. 978,872 had a new diagnosis of at least one autoimmune disease during the time period of evaluation. The mean age of diagnosis was 54 years, while 64% of all patients were female. The overall instance rate ratio, the IRR for 2017-19 versus 20. Uh, 2000 to 2002 was 1.04, suggesting overall only a modest increase in incidence during this time. Number of new diagnoses increased by 22%, largely due to an increasing number of secondary autoimmune disease diagnoses. 15% give or take of all patients with an autoimmune disorder were diagnosed with a second autoimmune disorder. Risk was generally highest among patients with connective tissue diseases. There was a high degree of comorbidity between Sjogren's syndrome, SLE, and systemic sclerosis. Addison's disease instance was considerably higher among people with pre-existing autoimmune diseases than in the general population. Overall, most autoimmune disorders were more common in women than in men. Uh, thyroid disorder, Sjogren's, lupus, systemic sclerosis had the highest IRR in women versus men, whereas um, ankylosing spondylitis, coded, remember, we're going back some time in terms of the coding, childhood onset type 1 diabetes and myasthenia gravis had the highest IRR in men. Um, autoimmune disorders developed at any age. That's really important. Median age at first disease presentation varied greatly among individual autoimmune diseases. I refer you to the paper for the details, but incidence generally increased with age. This was the case for Graves' disease, pernicious anemia, and rheumatoid arthritis particularly. People in the least deprived socioeconomic quintiles were more likely to be diagnosed with celiac disease and polymyalgia rheumatica, and people in the most deprived quintile had the highest proportion of pernicious anemia, RA, and SLE. Interestingly, we also saw seasonal variation, um, but only for type 1 diabetes, which was more commonly diagnosed in winter, and vitiligo, which was more commonly diagnosed during the summer. Perhaps the last um, uh, observation reflects sun exposure and clinical emergence. So what do we conclude from all of this? Well, autoimmune diseases are common. They affect approximately one in 10 individuals. Disease burden continues to increase over time at varying rates across individual diseases. But the overall increase in incidence is modest, but it's not a decrease. Socioeconomic, seasonal, and regional disparities were observed among several autoimmune disorders, suggesting environmental factors in disease pathogenesis, either underlying or at least in their clinical emergence and recognition. And interrelations between autoimmune diseases are commensurate with shared pathogenetic mechanisms, 
or predisposing factors uh, or underlying genetics. And that was particularly evident in the connective tissue disorders and endocrine diseases arising from autoimmunity. So lots of information here. I uh, send both of these papers to you with, uh, with my commendation. I think they're both very interesting. They give us a lot of new information, a lot to cogitate upon. Well, as ever, to view the publications uploaded this month and to access our other podcasts and resources, slides, summaries, abstracts, insight, podcasts, expert discussions, it's all on cytokinesignaling.com. It, it's free to access. Go along there, have a look, um, learn. And, and as always, thank you for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast media from. And make sure to let us know what you think by leaving a review. And as ever, thank you so much for your attention. I appreciate you giving a little time to the podcast. I hope it's useful. I hope it helps you in your practice, treating people with, uh, with our immune diseases or in your thinking, if you're one of those uh, subscribers. And I, I know you're out there. We know not actually who you are, but we know that you're, you're out there and interested in investigating the disease. Thanks ever so much for your curiosity. Take care. Stay well. Bye-bye.